Um, you have mentioned a lot about the new technology that Hong Kong is interested to attract very much, and we discussed this actually yesterday a lot in our own over uh, our own programs. Now the question is the talent that is needed that was also addressed. So what does the Hong Kong government uh, do in order to develop and and to attract technology talents? Um, how can you also do? Um, what do I say about talents for the top universities that, for example, from top universities abroad, people would come to Hong Kong to do research here and uh, that you have all the best talent, so to say, here in Hong Kong for your technological development? Oh, thank you. Well, to attract talents to Hong Kong, uh, particularly in the area of innovation and technology, I think it is important to have the career opportunities for them. So for us, for us, Hong Kong alone is, although we have very strong research capabilities in some areas in our universities, say for example, artificial intelligence in terms of facial recognition, Hong Kong is leading the world. Uh, in terms of uh, certain medical areas, say for example, for the test to be conducted for pregnant women to uh, prevent uh, uh, prenatal disease, things like that, we are leading. But we need to have critical mass. With critical mass, we can offer ample opportunities for researchers and professionals in the tech area. How to do it? Uh, I mentioned about creating two clusters, uh, one in artificial intelligence and robotics, the other in biohealth. Uh, these two clusters we build hardware structures, and we provide funding for those, say for example, overseas universities or research labor laboratories, if they, if they are willing to move some of their applied research here, they can use this funding and supporting scheme. The idea is to uh, invite them over to encourage them to work with our universities so that gradually we can have more and more top-notch universities and research institutions to have their research projects and talents here. Uh, the unique arrangement under the one country, two system is protection of intellectual property rights and Hong Kong's lifestyle. So we are quite confident in terms of our attractions to foreign talents. But what is more is that we leverage on our unique position and have secure the policy support of the central government to allow, uh, to allow research institutions and academy there to move some of their laboratories here, to put some of their projects here, and even to allow certain funding from the mainland to come to Hong Kong uh, to do project research projects. So uh, in a nutshell, by having these clusters built up, we would be able to, uh, to attract more people to come and thereby bringing in additional talents. Okay. Thank you very much. I can imagine Hong Kong is such an attractive place to live for young people. It's so active and a lot is going on. So compared to Europe, this is also a very nice feature, I believe. Yeah. Um, may I ask you one more question sure, from the floor? Uh, given the latest economic outlook, do you foresee any further adjustments in Hong Kong's real estate prices? Uh, as this has also a great, to a great extent, affects the cost of running a business, doesn't it? Yeah, real estate in Hong Kong is, has been very expensive, and as you rightly put it, affecting our competitiveness. Very expensive, yeah. Um, in the past few months, we have seen the market start to adjust. Uh, from August till now, it's about 5%, give or take, another 1% or 2%, uh, because all the indexes published are lagging behind. Uh, going f but this assessment has been ordinary. So uh, from the government's standpoint, there is indeed no cause for alarm. If it is an ordinary adjustment, 
uh, given the already very high property price, uh, why not? Uh, uh, what is important for us as policymaker and government official is to, uh, to assess whether it is a situation of sharp substantial drop uh, or an ordinary kind of adjustment. Our assessment is the latter case. Uh, the latter scenario. Uh, so we will remain uh, cautious, but let the market uh, play it out. And in terms of the downward adjustments of the property market's impact on our economy and on the security of our financial system, uh, this has been under my radar. Uh, so far, no cause for alarm, because the situation nowadays is very, very different from the situation back in 1997 or 98. I can elaborate, of course, but it's time consuming. But uh, for those of you uh, who are familiar with uh, the, the property market in Hong Kong, uh, no matter it is demand supply situation, liquidity situation, mortgage ratio situation, uh, the strength of the, uh, the uh, property, property developers, uh, the pan up demand, the employment situation, all different from 1997-98. So uh, we would let the, uh, the market uh, to assess as it is required. Um, make sure at the same time risks are under control. Thank you very much, Paul John. We could listen to you the whole afternoon. I know it's so interesting, but I know you're on a very, very tight schedule. Uh -huh. So we have to finish here and to thank you very, thank very you. much. It was wonderful insight. Thank you for your time and for being here today at our lunch. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, again. thank you for having me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.